Okay, hi there. So just to finish off this uh, short series of videos on information failure, just want to take you through a couple of key analysis diagrams that you might want to use in an answer to improve your analysis marks. Uh, let's take an example, first of all, of a consumer who might overestimate the private benefit of consumption. So the marginal private benefit is the benefit to the individual consumer of consuming the next unit. And oftentimes people have imperfect information about their own private benefits. They suffer from an information gap. A good example, perhaps, would be people overestimating the benefit of taking a food supplement, maybe a sports drink or something, or the benefits to them of taking a high caffeine drink, uh, or perhaps even the benefits of something like cosmetic surgery or tanning, uh, tanning sessions. Well, if they had better information, if they had fuller information, uh, then the demand curve for the product would be to the left than when they have limited information. And if that was the case, they'd be less willing uh, and able to buy the product and the quantity would go from Q1 to Q2, perhaps at a lower price. So the key there would be perhaps to provide consumers with better labelling, better, more accurate, accurate information about the, uh, the consequences or the benefits of consumption. Uh, individuals oftentimes have imperfect information. If they had better information, the marginal private benefit curve would shift, leading to a smaller equilibrium quantity and perhaps uh, a reduced market failure. Another good example, of course, is if you underestimate the benefit of consumption. So perhaps an example there might be underestimating the benefits of a healthy uh, diet, perhaps the benefits of giving up smoking, perhaps the benefits of taking a new training course or some sort of form of a further or higher education. Well, in this situation, the choice you're making with limited information implies a lower level of demand than if you had better information. So fuller information would allow you and be make you more willing and able to spend. Uh, so in this case, the quantity would go up from Q1 to Q2. In reality, uh, we know that information failure is absolutely pervasive. Most people don't have full information about the costs and benefits of a particular choice or a particular decision. Now, Hubert Seymour very famously gave, gave us this concept of bounded rationality. And this is the idea that the cognitive decision-making capacity of humans, the brain power, the calculation power is limited. Um, you know, we, we can't be fully rational because we have limited computational capacity to make those you know, weigh up every cost and benefit, and also because of the complexity of information involved. We live in a society where lots of products are actually quite complex, uh, made up of many moving parts, and we, we can't be expected to know everything about everything we buy and sell or the decision, decisions we make. So we live in a world of bounded rationality, and one of the ways that people respond to that is that they may move towards what's called satisficing behaviour. Now, satisficing is a move away from maximising behaviour, satisfactory, sufficient choices. And satisficers, and I'm one of them, we tend to examine a limited set of alternatives. We don't think about every holiday destination we could go to. We don't think about every type of uh, you know, coffee machine. Uh, we don't think about every you know, choice of whatever it is, you know, blended drinks we examine a limited set of alternatives and then we choose the best of them given the information we have and given our experience and consumers are often happy to use rules of thumb sometimes called heuristics when making decisions i don't want the best burger in the world i just want a burger like the one i had last time those kind of things are satisfying decisions and it's an important aspect of understanding the economics of information failure. 